Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson. I'm the author of this book, Nomad Capitalist, where I talk about how to go where you're treated best. And I watched a television show not too long ago that reminded me of one of the key concepts that I believe is really important for aspiring nomad capitalists. And that's to be not a citizen, but a customer. You know, we talk about how to legally reduce your taxes, get a second passport, live overseas, because there may be better opportunities for you to keep more of your wealth, live a happier life, have more freedom. And yet so many people push back on that because they say it's unpatriotic to go and live somewhere else. They say it's your duty to stay and fight to lower the tax rates in your country or to improve the freedoms. Everyone should stay and improve their country. I happen to disagree because I believe that citizenship should not make you not be a customer. Every business and every government should be fighting for customers. Uh, and so. I was watching an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm recently, the show with Larry David, who was the co-creator of Seinfeld. I believe it was season 10. In the beginning of season 10, Larry David meets up again with uh, his old nemesis, who used to run a little coffee stand on the back lot of a film studio. Now this guy has his own storefront, and he is selling uh, coffee, Mocha Joe's Coffee Shop. Larry David goes into the coffee shop, gets into a fight once again with Mocha Joe, gets banned from the shop, and goes home. But a couple days later, he's driving by the shop, shaking his head in disgust, and he looks next door to the shop. And what does he discover? That the precisely <laughs> the shop right next door is for lease. So he goes in, leases the shop, builds it out, and decides to open Latte Larry's, his own competitive coffee shop, or as he calls it, a spite store. He's going to spite his nemesis, Mocha Joe, by opening his own coffee shop, by fixing the things that he thinks are wrong with Mocha Joe's shop, but also, as I recall, uh, they're going to have lower prices. And he would have the flexibility as the guy who's made hundreds of millions of dollars from Seinfeld. He can afford to sell coffee at practically Graham Stephan prices of 10 cents or 20 cents. I'm making up the 10 or 20 cents, but he can sell coffee at low, low prices. Now, let's take an example of a situation where you've got two coffee shops next door to each other. One guy is just a normal small business owner, and whether he's just used to being the only shop in town or he has high prices for his product that you know, makes it more expensive for him to sell you the product. Whatever the reason, his coffee is $5 for a cup. And the guy next door can afford to lose money in that same cup of coffee. He sells it for a dollar. Okay? Where would you go? Would you go to the place for $5 because it's the right thing to do or because you want to support the guy Mocha Joe? I guess you could. But most people would go to the place where the coffee is one-fifth the price because they're getting a lot more value for their money. They're going where they're treated best. They don't particularly care that one guy's losing money and it's, oh, it's not fair to poor Mocha Joe. This guy can afford it. He's a rich guy. It doesn't matter. They just want the cheapest coffee. And I learned that uh, a number of years ago, back during the global financial crisis. I lived in Arizona in the U.S. and I got a coupon one day in my mail for a free sandwich at a sub shop which is now out of business. It was a national chain. They went out of business. Practically the whole chain closed down. But I remember going in and waiting. I was about the fifth person in line getting my free sandwich. And when I went to pay, the guy in front of me asks the, uh, the young girl at the register. This was a great lesson for me early on in my entrepreneur days about employees. He said, hey, how's business going? You know, these free coupons. You know, what's, what's the scoop? And she said, oh, well, we're getting a lot more customers, which is good. But then I realized we're losing money on every one of the customers, so I figured that was bad. So I figured it, it evened out. Right? This is who's working the counter. And you know, the reality is everyone who went and got their free sub sandwich, they didn't care if the guy who owned that franchise made money or didn't make money. They didn't care that eventually he went out of business. It wasn't their problem. And you know what's also not your problem? Whether the country that you're from employs its own workers whether they pay their own bills, whether they have enough money to fight wars or do whatever else they want to do. You are an economy of one. You or your family, you are your own little nano economy and you deserve to go where you're treated best. Now, people ask, Andrew, what if everyone did what you're talking about and didn't you know, pay anything? Well, number one, good. Number two, not everyone's going to do so. 99% of people are going to stay where they are. They're not going to go where they're treated best. But, you know, I don't think one person or a hundred people or even a million people leaving a country like the United States and no longer paying their taxes to the United States because they found somewhere better, no longer employing a few Americans in their small business, that may not make a huge dent. But imagine the difference that it makes to you in your life. You're a business owner, let's use you know, my often example, you make a million dollars a year. You're paying $450,000 in taxes to live in the United States or whatever other Western country you're in. 
Now imagine you could deploy that money back into your business. Oh, and by the way, instead of hiring five people in the United States to help you, you could hire people more affordably who were eager to get to work in a country that incentivized you to do so. There are countries like Serbia, for example, you go in and hire 50 people, I think it is. Ah, no, no social security taxes, no kind of taxes at all. You just pay the workers what they get. And that's what we want uh, to, to inspire people, to employ people here. Or uh, you go to other countries, hey, you know, 10 year tax holiday, you don't pay any taxes, please come and live here because we really want people to move in and, and rent property, buy property, you know, give our, our economy a, a shot in the arm. Or hey, bring your company to our country, we just want money into our financial system. We want to, to be put ourselves on the radar, right? Like the way Hong Kong did back in the day. So just bring your business here, we won't tax you, we just want your dollars in our banks. Now. You could say, well, that's not fair because my country needs the money more than these guys. But you know what? In my mind, all countries are created pretty equally. They all have the right to be competitive, and they are. More countries than ever are competitive. More than 10 years ago, 20 years ago, certainly 30 years ago, the number of countries that are eagerly and actively vying for your business has never been larger. It's like the myriad of coffee shops around your town or an endless number of sub shops you have the freedom to choose. It's not the 1950s anymore where you'd only go to one of a few countries to start your business. You would never dream of living anywhere else. Now you have options. And what people are going to tell you is you're doing the wrong thing by moving those five jobs somewhere else to benefit you. Let me tell you something. Where you come from, they don't care about you. They don't value your business or else they would have offered you a deal. But what happens in any kind of monopoly when someone starts to lose their monopoly power, they don't like it. They'll blame you, they'll shame you, they'll tell you it's your fault. And they'll generally, generally remain arrogant. Look at Blockbuster Video. Netflix was knocking on their door. They said, no, you know, Netflix will never topple us. Now they're out of business because people found somewhere else to go. Is anyone crying for the owners of Blockbuster Video stores that they went out of business? What are those people doing now? Maybe some of them went bankrupt. Maybe they lost their home. Imagine what happened to all those people who ran the Blockbusters, the free sub shops, the places selling overpriced coffee, the places with bad service. Nobody cares. Be a customer, not a citizen. Go where you're treated best. If a country says, bring your business here, and we're so eager to have you move into our free trade zone, we'll waive all the taxes for the next 20 years. There's nothing wrong with accepting that because you have the ability to shop for the best option. You have the ability to go where you're treated best. And you know what? Human nature already is to do that. That's why people are gobbling down all the free subs they can. And if there was coffee for sale for 10 cents, they'd be gobbling that up too. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.